Okay, thanks for joining. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the top movers and fallers, and I'll be talking a bit about Apple and Tesla's split price. Obviously, from Monday, they're going to be trading at their new split adjusted prices, and on some platforms, we have visibility into what they're currently trading at now. So I'm going to give you some information on that and whether or not Tesla will feature within my portfolio and will I be adding more to Apple considering the new lower entry price. But before I get into the video, I just want to ask you guys for a massive favor. YouTube seems to be either de-recommending my videos or simply not notifying users when I post. I've seen a significant drop in the region of about 60 to 80% on average in views over the last few weeks. And... I never really noticed it until some of you guys actually brought it to my attention that you're not being notified when I actually post and so forth. And the analytics is telling the same story. So I want to ask all of you who do subscribe to please make sure you've hit the bell notification. When you do, there'll be three options, all personalized or none. Make sure it's on all if you want to be notified for all of the videos that we do produce. Obviously, I don't expect everyone to watch every single video. You're going to have preferences, etc. So if that's more you, then hit personalize. And obviously, YouTube will try to work out which ones you will basically like more. Um, but hopefully, um, that will start to see the views get back to you know where it was. Because the channel is growing, but the views and the viewership is actually um, dropping over the last couple of weeks by a significant amount. So I think there's something something some jiggery pokery that's going on there so yeah please subscribe to the channel if you do like the videos and if you do subscribe please hit that bell notification turn it on all um, and obviously we can get this pumping obviously please like the video as well i noticed that when you guys do make the effort to like the video it does have a significant impact on the viewership and on obviously the channel growing and so forth this is obviously free content a lot of you guys are making money from the stuff that we talk about which is the whole purpose i want you guys to make money grow your wealth you know better your livelihoods and so forth so you know it's the little gesture on your behalf just to like the video subscribe to the video and help the channel grow and so forth i mean i've had some messages saying you know curtis your pics help me you know pay for my wedding amd and shopify and i'm just like raw i mean i didn't get an invite but you know i'm so happy for you so congratulations to the guy that obviously got married and dm me that you know i helped pay for part of his wedding with these pics so yeah we're just going to keep this moving but yeah i will really really appreciate if you guys make a conscious effort to do that so yeah my link will be in the description down below if you are new to invest in freetrade.io forward slash hyphen infant sorry forward slash infant hyphen investors click on the link sign up deposit one pound and you'll get a free show up to 200 pounds all right cool admin out of the way let's get straight into the top movers now the first top mover to talk about was a top mover then it was a bottom mover and now it's a top mover. I don't know what's going on for this stock right now, but this stock, if you have been paying attention, is obviously Virgin Moolah. So again, the percentages I will be quoting to you will be from Simply Wall Street. And Virgin Moolah has gone up 7.03% this week. Um, the reason why Virgin Moolah has got, I mean, they're just having a bit of a topsy-turvy time. We talked about their loans, the deferred, all of the stuff. That's the reason why it's gone down. We talked about the UK economy. One thing that Virgin Moolah has done to basically counteract that this week is that they've introduced 90% loan-to-value mortgages with conditions. So basically, they're going to be offering for new first-time buyers 90% um, loan-to-value mortgages. For those of you that don't know what that means, it simply means that you can buy a property, and you can give a 10% deposit. Um, and obviously the loan, you can get a loan of 90% to the value of the property. Now, there's other factors you need to have into consideration, such as your buying power, which is basically your salary times three, four, or five X, depending on obviously your credit score and rating and a whole bunch of other factors. But loan to value is an important thing because in some instances, if, you, if you're only allowed an 80% or a 75% loan to value, it means you need a much, much bigger deposit. So a 90% loan to value means you only need a 10% deposit. However, the conditions they've got is that they want to fix it for seven or 10 years. Now, typically, if you've bought a property, you would know that most fixed deals are in the region from two years, three years, and five years. That's typically the average of what people go for. So seven years is quite aggressive. 10 years is even more aggressive. And if you think the life of a mortgage is on average 25 years, then, you know, you're doing a deal that's locking you in for, you know, a third of that or, or just a bit higher than a third. But the rate is not too bad. So the rate 
rates are around 2.99%. You never know what's going to happen with the market. Currently, most mortgage rates are actually lower than that. Um, I know mine's significantly lower than that. But, you know, I remember working in a bank and people were having mortgage rates of like 5%, 6% and so forth. Um, obviously, if you're buy to let in, it's going to be typically higher anyway. But these are just for residentials and it's just for first time buyers. Some of the other conditions is that obviously no masonettes, no flats, no new builds. So it's only specific types of properties. But in the main, that does give quite a big market share, a quite a big availability. If you couple that with the fact that stamp duty has now been frozen um, up until I think March it is 2021, that does provide a new opportunity for more virgin money, mortgage customers. And we know that mortgage customers is what they want in order to gain you know, a bigger revenue and a bigger profit for their balance sheet. So I think that's had a big impact and one of the reasons why it's obviously um, gone up. There was some other talk about giving up part of their South Africa credit card business but you know the way the deal is structured it doesn't really look like that's going to have a material impact to share price but yeah virgin money top mover then top faller now top mover again this week the next top mover to talk about is micro hard so micro hard this week has gone up 7.46 percent and it's all about TikTok right now. That TikTok news, you know, the deadline for basically making the acquisition is September the 15th. And the main news that came out this week is that Walmart has decided to team up with Microsoft to help the acquisition of TikTok. Um, and that could also mean that they can believe that, you know, content creators could benefit from this in ways from e-commerce to advertising, etc. If you think TikTok's probably got about, I think it was 500 million users. I don't know how many users just in the US business, but obviously it's a significant growing um I, I, I don't know if you can call it a business. I guess you can call it a business, but just a growing product. Do you know what I mean? A growing platform is probably the best word to be using. Um, Satya Nadella, the CEO of Microsoft, also had a meeting with President Trump to kind of alleviate his concerns about the security element. Um, and so it does look like the Walmart and Microsoft deal to buy TikTok is progressing, which is probably part of the reason why the share price has gone up. There is talks of Oracle trying to buy it as well. I mean, that's a really random acquisition. They're probably just trying to get in the game somehow. But yeah, it looks like Microsoft might win that. So if that's the case, then obviously that's going to have a big impact to the share price, not to mention a big user base that they can then try to offer their existing products and services to. It's all about cross-selling with these companies, right? And trying to get, you know, users to have more products with them across a variety of, of business units and verticals. So yeah, if that happens, then obviously it's going to have a big impact on Microsoft so yeah I think that's probably the reason why Microsoft has gone up quite considerably this week the last one to talk about is a bit of a misnomer and that one is Uber so Uber is the top mover for this week and this one has gone up 9.63 percent but as I say it's definitely definitely a bit of a misnomer because if you look at a lot of the news surrounding Uber this week a lot of it is quite negative you've got employees trying to sue uber over the stock price decline in a nutshell they're basically saying that you know you have promised us certain types of stocks based off a certain price uh, and now because the, the stock tanks so much our tax liability is higher and we've basically lost around nine million among us 190 shareholders or something along those lines so these shareholders are obviously people before it went public etc so um Uber's basically saying it's baseless, so we'll see what happens. But yeah, that's covering you another battle that Uber's going to be fighting in court. You've got a lot of news about hedge funds selling out of IPOs and selling out of Uber specifically, sorry. Um, and just saying, you know, they just don't see the ride hailing business really doing well. And that's one of the reasons. The only positive news is that the US's largest second or second largest pension company, which is called Cal STRS, I think it's Calsters, I think that's what it means, but it's a bit weird because there's not that many vowels in the word. Anyway, Cal STRS, they manage around 226 billion in assets. They've just bought another 770,000 shares in Uber. I think it's about 3.7% holding um, and they've added it to their existing 2 million shares that they already held and so forth. So I think that's obviously a big vote of confidence if pension companies or the largest, the second largest pension companies obviously make such a big acquisition into Uber. Me personally, I think Uber is just going to move sideways for a very long time. I'm not expecting Uber to be going to 40, 50, 60 dollars. You know, that was the case pre-COVID. Obviously now, I just think it's going to go sideways. I don't really think I'm going 
going to sell it. I think I'm just going to wait and see what happens, to be honest. Um, obviously, the delivery business is growing exponentially, but it's just not enough revenues in that as much as the ride hailing business. Um, and maybe I might have to re strategize Uber, so to speak. So we shall see what happens there. But at the moment, you know, it's still a stock that can have big swings either way. And obviously, 10% this week is obviously no mean feat. So, you know, that's the reason why Uber's basically gone up this week. Now, Let's move to the top fallers. So top fallers, luckily this week has been a pretty good week on average. So, you know, overall this week, you know, I've gone up quite considerably to considerably from the position I was in last week. Um, so actually there's only two fallers this week rather than multiple for me to talk about three. And there's one that stayed stagnant. So basically it's actually moved 0% or it's ended up at 0% um, for the week. So that one is imperial brand so based on simply wall street is zero percent um there's not much news around imperial brands there's a few articles from thought leaders in the tobacco space basically talking about the growth of imperial brands british american tobacco old tree and a few other companies um and they could be really big in 2027 but i'm not gonna lie bro 2027 is a bit long fam and i can't really wait that long to see this um come back into action the amount of money i can make in the next you know what i mean six years um we're basically in 2021 now so let's just call it six and a bit years rather than wait for that so that's that and then you've got loads of other companies and loads of other articles and and, and firms just talking about imperial brands just facing sh more taxes um negative headwind in terms of all of their regulation and it's just not going to go well for them so again this is probably one of the it's not probably this is a business that i've always mentioned to you that i will be selling i have tried to average it down a bit i have tried to find the right time to obviously make that sell um, i'm thinking maybe to wait until around november when they're going extive because typically the share price starts to rise when people know a dividend payment's coming and maybe i'll just sell before the ex -div date when the share price starts to rise a bit it means i will miss that dividend but i will benefit from regaining some of the capital that i'm potentially losing now or alternatively because that's that's not until november so again that's like three months away um i might just sell now put it into a stock that i feel is going to do well between now and november and recoup that money back so you know we we shall see i am looking into how i'm gonna reallocate my portfolio and just have a simpler portfolio that's just stuff that you know i am i am feel more confident about so yeah at the moment it's been a bit sideways with imperial brands the next one to talk about is octa so octa you can see here had just this massive hill man i mean octa just can't stay up it went from hit 205 to 224 and then it's back down to 207 man so yeah i'm gonna have to call it you know cocta or something because it just can't keep an erection bro it can't stay up and you know this is the this is the sad state of affairs of octa in fact it's not that sad of a state of affairs it had an earnings update the earnings update was really good this is the reason why it went up so much but the reason why it went down is because the ceo was a bit fast and basically announced headwinds for the next quarter um, which contributed to the fall so what they're basically saying is that 11 percent of octa's customers have been negatively affected by divop 91 um, and you know large enterprises are showing more demand for their product but a lot of the small and mid-sized companies are actually um, probably seeing less of a demand for their product um, due to maybe having to you know retain finances my theory is that most businesses that already have this product will have to keep having it i guess the issue here is new acquisitions of businesses um, that don't currently have it and probably are going to seek alternative or cheaper methods to secure their business um, so yeah I mean every business is entitled to do what it needs to do I do believe businesses that already have Octa you know are not going to be in any position selling it particularly now with more people working from home more cyber security attacks and obviously having identity access management as being a really crucial and important facet of their business going forward but you know we shall see what's going on there at the moment it went up it went back down again so hopefully it'll go back up a bit um but octa is definitely something i'm still going to be keeping in my portfolio you know it is a little bit overvalued by some extent when you look at obviously it's PE and some of its ratios and so forth um, but I just do see a genuine need and like I say I'm 74% up with it so I'm okay and maybe I might add a bit more to this position maybe from some of the ones that I sell and just kind of leave it for the long term from that point onwards so yeah that's that but anyway the last top mover sorry top faller 
to get this right, top faller, the biggest top faller for this week is legal in general. And um, legal general has gone down 2.90%. In fact, actually, funny enough, it's actually the accurate percentage here um, compared to simply Wall Street, which is good. Um, but um, nevertheless, not really any news on legal in general, to be fair. And a 2.9% movement in a positive or negative direction for a UK business of this size is not really that notable. So um, I think this is just a natural buying, selling, ebbs and flows of the market. I don't think there's any specific news that has attributed itself to that. Now, in terms of stock splits, what you will see currently for Apple is that on free trade, on trading 212, you will still see the current price of $499.23, um, which is the current price at the moment. But if you go over to Robinhood, I will put the link in the description in um, in 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 the description of the video. You will see that Robinhood is showing that the trading price for Apple at the moment is a hundred and twenty five dollars. Um, let me get you the exact price so you guys know that I'm not um, selling tickets. One hundred and twenty five dollars and fifty cents is the current trading price for Apple. So that's basically going to come into effect. You know, you should hopefully see that on free trade um, and trading 212 from, you know, the moment that the US market opens on Monday. Um, I know obviously the UK market is closed due to bank holiday, but obviously the US market will still be in full effect. So hopefully we shall see that. I don't know if this is the first stock split that a stock on free trade has experienced. So, you know, there might be some issues. I'm experiencing some issues with Simply Wall Street at the moment because of the stock split changes. It's calculating its old share price date to the prices, um, this current stock split price in a weird way and telling me that I've got like a you know, some 526% return. It's really weird. This is the reason why on the thumbnail, there's no percentage return at the moment because the percentage is giving me is just completely skewed. So I don't really know what my exact return is based off that. But, you know, from next week, hopefully it should, it should have sort of rectified itself. But yeah, those of you that thought Apple was too expensive, you know, now obviously you can be buying that $125. I will make clear that the ex expense of a business is nothing to do with the share price. You know, I've been doing these posts recently and I talked about Amazon in a little bit and I made the mistake early in my investing career not investing in Amazon it was at around 14.50 I think and I was like that's way too expensive but you know it's got nothing to do with the actual valuation of a business when you relate it to its earnings and how much revenues that a business takes in so in fact it's basically no difference it's the, it's the short way to see it there's no difference from 499 to 125 except the optics and you know the illusion that it's actually a cheaper entry price however you know that illusion that optics might actually have a big um, psychological impact to a lot of newer younger etc investors that might want to get into apple um, and obviously then you know might then push the share price up and so forth so you know people move in very very funny ways when it comes to the market not everyone bases things off pure logic and mathematics there's a lot of emotion there's a lot of feeling that goes into things like this and you know this is going to be one of those factors so i think it will have a positive impact regardless if it's stock splitted or not you know i bought apple a long time ago and i'm definitely going to be keeping buying apple and i'm probably going to buy you know a lot more shares in apple as well now as well um just because i think people are going to do that so i might as well just get in there and i want to have certain strong meaningful positions um but yeah that's the price for apple now in regards to tesla what you will see and it's been on my watch list you know since since i wish i had the date for when these stocks went on my watch list so you can see how long i've been watching some of these stocks but tesla i mean i, I think everybody watches tesla to be fair so there's nothing new around there but anyway the tesla split price at the moment is 443 dollars and 40 cents so when it opens on Monday, you know, barring any after hours trading movement, um, you'll see it now at $443.40. So the question becomes, Curtis, is now your time to buy Tesla? Now, again, my philosophies and values and principles stay exactly the same. I believe Tesla is ridiculously expensive, purely based off the valuation. Um, I think Tesla has a fantastic CEO and fantastic potential, not just the cars business, not just the solar business, but obviously the battery business and then anything else it chooses to get to into the future. Um, but then I also feel like at the same time, look, if everyone does stay at home and if loads of you know people around the world, you know, try and adjust to this new normal of staying at home, I think car sales generally broadly is probably going to go down as people realize they don't have a need to own a vehicle as much if they're not moving 
moving around as much. I mean, that's just a very loose theory based off no insight and analysis whatsoever. So that might have an impact to Tesla's business. Um, and then I just feel like at the same time, I think at some stage it's going to have to kick in. The fundamentals is so soon going to have to match up to the share price at some stage. So I don't really know. However, I'm just banking that you lot are going to continue to be extremely greedy. And if you lot want to stay greedy, then I might as well try and profit off that greed. So I definitely will be putting a position into Tesla. I don't know how many shares I'm going to do. Um, I need to work it out. Um, I am going to work it out based off the amount of stocks that I sell from the other positions, stroke any new money that I want to add to it um, this month. Um, but yeah, I think I might as well just put a position into Tesla. Some of you guys have made a ridiculous return and I have had a little bit of FOMO at the end of the day. So, you know, there is there is some truth to that. But the bottom underlining foundation of any investment that I make is do I actually believe in a business long term? And irrespective of the valuation, irrespective of the fact that I think there's a lot of greed currently going on in the market, with this stock split, it might cool it off for a bit and there might be some sideways movement, which might be good for the stock. It might even go down for a bit, which then means I can dollar cost average and just keep adding money on a month by month basis. And even if it was to go down to the end of the year and I was just adding money and made no money on Tesla this year, but 2021, it started to rocket, I would be more than happy with that outcome at the same time as well. So just based off the fact that the business long term, you know, everything does get back to normal should have has no reason to not do well um then obviously I'm, I'm gonna probably take the leap on that so yeah i'll put tesla in there and you lot can just leave me alone about that and stop tormenting me anyway that's pretty much it for today um i will be selling some positions and you guys will be seeing that in probably next week's update um just working out which positions to sell based off a number of factors how much i'm losing um it could be, you know, what's the smallest positions that I have in terms of position size or, you know, it could be potential or some other, you know, metric that I like to do to kind of overcomplicate things. But we shall see. We shall see. Anyway, hopefully you found this video useful. Again, if you got this far, please subscribe. Please hit that bell notification. Hit all so you get, you know, all of this, all of the videos when we do post. Um, and obviously, please like the video. It means a lot to me and the channel. And I'm really grateful and appreciative of it. Follow on Instagram and on Twitter. I hope you guys are liking the new stock pick graphics and posts that we're doing. Don't worry, there's hundreds of more to come. I've got a spreadsheet of all of these stocks that I'm going to be doing similar posts. And I'm going to be trying getting them down on a daily basis so that, you know, you guys can continue to be fed information and, and new stocks. I think that's one of the biggest challenges for new investors is just where to start, where to find some stocks and some information so you know remember it's not advice i'm just trying to make things easier for you guys but if if that helps in some way shape or form then you know show your appreciation follow the channel and obviously hit the like on that on those posts as well other than that take care enjoy your weekend and i will catch you next time with another investment video take care guys peace